Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about why thyroid disease is so common right now. Why is it that so many people are being diagnosed with hypothyroidism? What is it about the world that we live in that's causing this increase? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be talking to you about what I think the most common cause is, and I'm gonna be talking to you about what, I, what the general population or the general um, body of doctors think is the cause. And you will see there are some differences here. But I think when we put these together, I think we can have a good explanation for why things are happening the way that they are. So first, whenever we talk about an increased rate of, of a, or an increased incidence of a disease, we always have to look at testing. Now, testing is just the way that we identify that the, that the disease exists, right? And as a civilization, our technology is becoming more and more advanced, which means that generally speaking, we are catching diseases earlier than we used to. And that's a great thing, right? It's a great thing for things like cancer. It's a great thing for thing, things like hormone imbalances and so on. So testing does account for an increase in diagnostics or diagnostic capacity when with any disease. And I think we have to at least look at this when we're talking about thyroid disease. Now, in the case of diagnosing hypothyroidism, most doctors are using one test primarily, and that is the TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, if we were to look at that, and that's usually, by the way, the third gen, third generation, which just means there was other generations previous to that, and this one is far more sensitive. So is the TSH accurate for what it tests for? Yes, it's accurate for testing thyroid stimulating hormone levels. Now, a lot of people are gonna bristle at that statement because they'll say, well, the TSH isn't that accurate for diagnosing hypothyroidism, to which I agree, but that's not what I said. I said TSH is a sensitive measure of testing TSH levels. But what's different though about that is that that doesn't necessarily correlate to the diagnostic capacity that it has at diagnosing hypothyroidism, which is what we really care about here. So in that case, I don't think it's that accurate. Now, yes, it is more sensitive and yes, it can, it can identify even smaller changes in the TSH level itself, but if that TSH level doesn't correlate with hypothyroidism, then it's not that necessarily that great of a test. So I don't think in general, better testing is, can account for the increased rate that we see. And I think most people would probably agree with that, even endocrinologists and family practice, practice doctors. But is it playing a role? Absolutely, I do think some role is being played here. So if that's not it, what else could it be? Well, could it be the fact that more patients than ever are aware of thyroid disease. There are blogs, in fact, you listening to this, you're becoming more aware, right? By virtue of listening to this um, discussion on thyroid disease, so this would count in this, but we have Facebook groups, we have blogs, we have videos, we have social media. Patients nowadays are more in tune or have better understanding of thyroid disease than at any other time in history, I, I would argue. And that is a good thing because what that means is if a patient hears about something and then goes to their doctor, they can request testing early. So if we have a combination of better diagnostics up here, and we have more patient awareness because patients are requesting to be tested for this thing because they are looking at their symptoms and they're not feeling well, then we have a setup where, yeah, that could potentially explain things. But in this case, I don't think it's true. Now, the problem here is that even though more patients are aware than ever before, patients there's a disconnect between the things that patients are asking for and the things doctors are willing to order. So if it were the case that doctors were listening to patients and they were getting all of the tests like free T3 and free T4 and thyroid antibodies and they were getting you know total T3 and reverse T3, all tests beyond the TSH by the way, by the way so you can do this plus the TSH, TSH. I think if we had all these done, then we would see a dramatic increase in hypothyroidism um, diagnoses, but we're not seeing that, right? So, so I think there's a disconnect between the patients and the testing or the patient awareness and the testing. So I don't think that that can account for it, but does it increase it a little bit? Absolutely, I do think it, it plays a little bit of a role. So this brings me to some of the other ones that I think are far more relevant. So one of those is baseline stress. So there's no question that stress has a negative impact if it's prolonged, if it's prolonged, if you have too much stress, has a negative impact on just about every system inside of your body, including your thyroid. In fact, I would say of all the systems that are impacted negatively by stress, the thyroid is probably one of the most sensitive, which means the more stress that you're under and the longer you're under that stress, the more likely you are to see a decline in thyroid function. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, well, if stress is playing a role in the increased incidence of hypothyroidism, then surely we can look at the population in general and say, hey, 
is the population undergoing higher levels of stress than they were 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 30 years ago? And the answer to that is yes. So we can look at studies and we can ask people to say, hey, how much stress are you under? And I want you to just answer this as well. How much stress are you under now compared to 10 years ago, compared to 20 years ago? I mean, we have a lot of things going on in the world. We have a lot of things going on in the economy, a lot of things happening just in the last five years that have dramatically increased the stress levels of most people. And in polling, we also see that to be the case. So we have an increase in negative experiences. So we'll just call that negative EXP to the tune of about 30%. So 30%, we have, there's a 30% increase in negative experiences, which translates to a higher level of stress. And if we know that, that the thyroid is more sensitive to changes in stressful uh, situations, then we can say, yeah, stress is probably contributing to the increase in thyroid disease that we see. Now, by itself, I don't think that can explain everything. I think stress definitely declines thyroid function or reduces thyroid efficiency somewhat, but maybe only five to 10%. And that's not enough for a lot of people to go into full-blown hypothyroidism, but it is enough for a lot of people to experience just minor symptoms, weight gain, um, brain fog, fatigue, that sort of thing, right? So more baseline stress, definitely important, but can account for everything. But here is where I think we probably are getting into a little more of the money. And that's with the exposure to endocrine disrupting chemicals. That's why that's what it stands for, EDC, endocrine disrupting chemicals, um, or EDCs for short. These are chemicals that you and I come into contact with on a daily basis. And these are very important and not talked about enough in my opinion. Now, part of the reason for this is whenever you start talking about chemicals that your body comes into contact with, there's always some pushback from other people because we get into the realm of detoxification and it kind of the the conversation devolves because people will say on one side uh, you don't need to worry about that your body takes care of it and then the other people will say well you don't understand everybody has to detox so, so the truth is somewhere in the middle right there's no question that certain people are impacted more by these chemicals than other people and i think also we have to look at this as a buildup of these chemicals in our body over time so if if it were the case that we were exposed to a minor amount of these chemicals and every day, you know, you're coming into contact with these things, by the way, when you um, consume, touching plastics, touching receipts, um, touching uh, beauty products. I mean, they're all over the place, right? No matter what, every single one of us is coming into contact with these every single day. But the question is, why do some people experience a negative reaction and others do not? And it probably has to do with our ability to get rid of them. Because there's no, just like I'm, I'm different than you, we physically look different. Um, we, there's so many differences about our bodies that it's, it's, you would never say that two people are identical unless they're identical twins, which is obviously the exception to the rule. And part of that reason is because we have different enzymes and proteins and cellular function compared to other people. At least they, they work at different rates. And I think that this explains why there are some people who are more sensitive to EDCs than other people. Because if we looked at this, if we, if, if we set some level of, of threshold as once you get above this level, you become toxic, we'll find people at all levels. We'll find people here, we'll find people here, we'll find people here. And once we go above this level, that's when you might start to experience thyroid problems and other hormone problems. And some of you listening to this are probably here, probably here. And that's because you have a different capacity of getting rid of these things. So I think that EDCs are probably the elephant in the room that are contributing a significant amount to thyroid disease. And we know that because there are the endocrine societies and all of these major organizations, they're talking about these chemicals and they're, they're saying, hey, look, these things are basically invisible. Um, you don't know that you're coming into contact with them. I mean, they're, not, they're, not, they're visible to the human eye. You're coming into contact with them. They're, you're getting into your bodies and they're blocking thyroid hormones and, and other hormones at the cellular level. So it's really hard to assess their, their, the damage they're causing for all of these reasons. And we know that they are impacting people to some degree. I think that they are probably doing in negatively impacting uh, patients more than most people realize, but that's just my opinion based off what I've done um, and my experience. So EDCs I think are very important. And then finally, the last one, which I think is also equally, or maybe perhaps more important, is the impact that generalized weight gain and a generalized unhealthy lifestyle has on thyroid function. So to put this into perspective, we'll talk about lifestyle. Lifestyle just means, you know, your day-to-day -day activities, how much you're sleeping, how much you're eating, uh, how much you're exercising, that sort of thing. How much stress are you under, that sort of thing. Now we know it's, and you probably already, I alluded to this previously, but every single one of those things, if not done correctly, drags down thyroid function. And that is because your thyroid is the primary regulator of metabolism. It's a primary regulator of other hormones inside of your body. So if you are not treating your body appropriately, 
because you're not getting enough sleep or you're eating processed foods or we'll do foods here or because you're not exercising or just because you're living life and you have more stress every single one of these will have a negative impact on thyroid function and by the way we also know that weight gain by itself reduces thyroid function as well and we know that as a population are we getting you know heavier or less heavier well we know that we're gaining weight on average every single year people are getting more heavy over time so we have a, a drag on lifestyle which is absolutely occurring we have an increase in weight gain and i think that is definitely part of the reason that we're seeing an increase in thyroid disease now if you were to ask me and we look at these all together we have several here um, better testing and more patient awareness i think are definitely contributing somewhat but i think the majority can be explained by these right here so more stress an increased exposure to edcs and weight gain and generalized poor lifestyle i think are probably what account for in my opinion 75 percent to 80 percent more testing and these things definitely account for some but we'll say that's probably at most 25 percent or so so if anyone ever asks you why people are experiencing thyroid disease at higher levels i think this is probably the answer now if you have any questions about this feel free to leave them in the comments below if you like this sort of information, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients. Um, if you have thyroid disease, then this will be great. And if you think you might, this will also be beneficial for you. So I have these resources designed to help people in your situation. So that's all I have for you guys. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.